Welcome back to part two of episode one of the Transaction Care Show. My name is Lily, your host and resident transaction care coordinator. As I discussed in the previous episode, we are going to get into why I quit my job in real estate. And in the next episode, we'll get into how I got here with this show. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. This is a show regarding the world of real estate, the ins and outs. We'll discuss home buying, good versus bad business, the ups and downs of money and the effects it can have in your home buying journey or in as someone working in real estate, we're going to get into it. I'm hoping to simplify the process of real estate um, from any perspective, whether you work in it, you're a buyer, you're a seller, and let's get into it. Let's have some fun. So in the previous episode, I touched on how I entered real estate, the real estate industry, and now I'm going to touch on how and why I quit. Kind of. So as I mentioned, um, with my previous employers, I'd been there for several years, um, basically my whole young adult life. And honestly, I had certain life events not occurred, I would probably still be working with them. But I'm glad I'm not because in 2018, I quit my job. Yeah, I did. I really, really did. I quit my job and decided to take some time off and focus on myself and my personal life. Um, If you want to hear the backstory to that whole event, because there were, there were tears, there was drama, so much. Go to my personal channel, Fire Life. I will get into that whole situation. I even posted the, a video of me quitting my job um, that day. So go to my personal channel, Fire Life. Uh, the link will be in the description below uh, where you'll subscribe to that channel as well, where you will get the lowdown on what really happened. Um, it was It was an interesting, outrageous story. <laughs> But anyway, leading up to the time of, you know, the moment of me quitting, um, I felt in my core, just all in here, just that I needed a change. You know, when you're in a position in your life for a long period of time, we grow, we learn, we change and evolve as people. And the things that used to serve us no longer serve us at least in the capacity it did in the beginning. And I started to feel like I was outgrowing this company, this job, this industry, and I needed to get out somehow or change, something needed to change. Um, Prior to me quitting, I had become the office manager. I was like, cool, maybe more responsibility will make me feel more empowered, you know, more encouraged and, and and excited to be here but it really it really wasn't like in my core I knew I had to get out I just didn't know how to you know for so many years I let my fears and my lack of confidence hold me back um, as well as just feeling comfortable being comfortable comfortable was easy for me and life outside of work was so challenging And I was also very young and I just wanted to have fun, you know, and if work was in place, I didn't have to worry about that. So therefore, let me just leave that alone and figure out the rest of my life around that. Um, But when things started to come to the surface, I realized that I really wasn't happy with my situation. You know, for example, (laughs) this is... It's, it's ridiculous now, but in the moment, it was such a point of lots of anxiety for me because the outside world beyond this company, because I'd been there for so long and it was really my first job, first real job, and I was so nervous to apply for other jobs and scared because I didn't know Excel. <laughs> it, I still don't know Excel. How about that? <laughs> and I thought because I didn't know Excel, people were going to realize that I'm a fraud or that 
I don't have the skills to work at other companies when in actuality, I should have just been applying for jobs that I wanted, not just because I worked in real estate or admin, but really applied myself towards an industry that I could have started from the bottom and worked my way up, um, which is what eventually led me to quitting. Because I was so comfortable and I chose easy over joy and happiness, I just knew it wasn't going to advance me in life. And, you know, I had to really tap into my 19 year old self again, because at this point I'm about to be 30. I, yeah, I'm about to be 30. And, you know, something in your mind changes when you're about to be 30, just everything you feel like you really need to step up and grow up and there should be this these sh grand shifts in life and of course work was one of those mo moments where I was just like reconsidering everything and I knew if I wanted to change and find my purpose or my passions were I had to change everything around me you know, maybe the job wouldn't wouldn't change necessarily, but my habits would, you know, I, so I did just that. So I changed up my whole routine and I got to learning. I soaked up as much information as I could from various podcasts, videos, books. I asked questions and sought out the knowledge I needed, you know, to eventually get to the next phase of my life. And I basically became a student again. You know, school wasn't something for me, but the process of learning just doesn't stop. That's a key that's a key aspect in life that we all should embrace is that the learning never stops. This went on for about two years, you know, strictly learning, staying home more, learning how to say no and yes in certain situations when necessary, and not being such a people pleaser. A part of me, it's my own decision to make, but a part of me felt guilty that in terms of being such a people pleaser, I didn't want to disappoint the people pulling for me behind the scenes when I should have actually listened to my gut when I was on vacation, when I was doubtful of taking the job again. You know, we are allowed to change our minds. You know, you can have, you can apply for what you think is your dream job but if you have a change of heart you have a change of heart and that's okay you know we have to live with those decisions but if that's what satisfies you in that moment and what you feel is right in your core listen to your gut listen to your intuition because you will always be right so a part of me taking on the job early on was to not disappoint those that had pulled for me and that you know advocated for me and what I had to realize later on in life was that pleasing other people is not going to make me successful. It's not going to make me happy. It's not going to make life any more enjoyable. In fact, it's going to delay my <laughs> delay uh, my life. It's going to hold me back. It's going to make me miserable, you know, just all of that. But with all that to say, it little and little did I know it wasn't Excel that I needed to learn, but rather to ultimately love myself and just trust the process. And that's it. So if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. You can email me and all of that information will be in the description below and I will get into the next episode. Um, well, I hope you get into the next episode it's already posted. It will go into why I created this show and stay tuned. You know, thank you for tuning in. The next episode is live and I will be posting every Thursday from here on out. So if whether you're listening or watching me, I appreciate you. You are worth it. Your time is worth it. So take care.